Hello and welcome ladies. If you are new here, my name is Jax and this is where I have been sharing our four year journey through infertility, IVF, adoption, parenting, and now pregnancy. This is gonna be my 32 week pregnancy update and we are talking about how my 32 week scan didn't exactly go as planned. All right, let's kick off this week that's been a bit much uh, with the baby update, like we always do. Baby Kingsley is about the size of a naked-tailed armadillo. Um, he's approaching his full birth length of around 16 and a half inches. And we know specifically this week that he's weighing in at around three pounds, 11 ounces. We know that because I had my 32 week scan exactly when I turned 32 weeks. And <sighs> that scan caused some anxieties. <laughs> I just, it did. For those of you that haven't watched all my updates, I've been getting growth scans every four weeks, um, honestly since week 20, because I had my week 20 anatomy scan. At 24 weeks, I had my um, echocardiogram. And then at 28 and now 32 weeks, I've had growth scans with another one scheduled for 36 weeks. This is partially because this is an IVF pregnancy and also because we found that marginal cord insertion, which if you remember from way back, the MFM, maternal fetal medicine doctor, she said that if it was going to cause problems in growth restrictions, it would probably show up between 28 and 32 weeks because that's the most rapid period of growth for a baby. So, here we are at 32 weeks and my growth scan wasn't awful. It wasn't awful. It was also not great. And I guess that just causes a lot of anxiety because anybody who goes through infertility and IVF and miscarriage, like anything that is sub, everything looks perfect is like a stressor. Like you just want to hear that things are going okay and to make it through this. So that's where I'm coming at. I know if this was just any pregnancy and normal people might not react this way, but it hit me really hard just because we're looking for not perfection, but just like normal, uneventful, right? That's always what I wish all my fellow infertility mamas is an uneventful pregnancy. So I don't like when things are abnormal. Here we go. Finally getting into it. Sorry. Essentially, baby Kingsley is measuring behind. Uh, because we've had other scans, we've known what percentile he is in. Um, in the past, he started out at the 61st, 63rd percentile, went down to the 51st, and measured in at the 31st at this scan. Here's what I can gather as much of what that means from my own research and from talking with the nurse. My OB was out on a week-long vacation and has yet to get back to me, so it's internet sleuthing and the nurse's comments. That's the best I got. Um, being in the 30th percentile isn't on its own concerning. Uh, Interuterine growth restriction when your baby is too small is technically classified as in the 10th percentile or lower. Obviously he's not there. What is triggering my concern is the trend downward. So that is one of my outstanding questions to my OB is how common it is to see this trend downward and comboed with that marginal cord insertion, is this a sign that that is actually becoming a problem because this is exactly what we have been on the lookout for. That's why we did these scans. That was the number one thing they mentioned with the marginal cord insertion is that sometimes blood flow gets restricted and the nutrition just doesn't get disseminated to the placenta well enough. Obviously we have some wiggle room um, and before we hit that 10% mark. And it's also important to note that even below the 10th percentile, 70% of those babies are just small, just normal, small. They're just small babies, small people. And 30% have some underlying uh, medical reason, a marginal cord insertion, some sort of genetic issue, something else that's actually causing them to be small for dangerous reasons. So. And that's about what I got when I asked my Facebook groups too. It was about that split of, eh, everything was fine when, with that kind of trend down. And then there's the other 30% that are like, yeah, it didn't go well, went to preterm labor, had to deliver early, stuff like that. So it has me concerned. Um, Interuterine growth restrictions is the number two leading cause of stillbirth with premature birth being the number one. Uh, obviously that's 
very much in the forefront of my mind because it's very much a reality of my world that I operate in um, being in the infertility space. So I'm not naive thinking that like, that can't happen to me. I'm trying to be very realistic with the chances of that actually happening as well as as optimistic as I can be. But that's where I am at. Uh, he was measuring at 30 weeks, five days, and we were in at the 32 week mark. Also, I know that those growth scans aren't perfect. I know people have commented that before. Um, my fundal height measuring from the top of your bump down to your pubic bone was also measuring a week behind and I had been perfectly on track with that. So we had two pieces of, of data there saying that yes, he's behind. Um, and like I said, it wouldn't be that concerning if there wasn't already this trend as well as this underlying possible cause. I have questions out to my OB. It's been over a week now, so I really would like to hear back from her. That being said, they did do his biophysical profile, which is essentially looking at fetal breathing, fetal heart rate, fetal movement, fetal tone, which is having their like arms up, not floppy, as well as the volume of amniotic fluid. And he did get an eight out of eight on that. So that is a uh, even better indicator of how well and healthy a baby is, is their biophysical profile over their growth. Um, so a lot of times, even if growth continues to fall, if their biophysical profiles come back, okay, then you can continue on. His heart rate was uh, 143 beats per minute. And like I said, he passed all of his biophysical profiles. So from that perspective, good like he's not in distress he is just trending smaller um i do have another scan scheduled at 36 weeks my doctor said there's no point in doing them more than th three weeks apart so that'll be four weeks but you get the point and i do talk to her um for my 34 week appointment as well so if she doesn't get back to me i will pester her in person other news from that scan he's still breach I talked about this <laughs> few weeks ago, where at 28 weeks, you have a 75% chance of being flipped head down like you're supposed to. And at 32 weeks, it is a 90% chance of being flipped down like you're supposed to. And then of course, at term, it is a 37% chance because only three to 4% of babies are breech at term. He's been breached the whole time. I've never seen him head down in any capacity. Um, Obviously now we're at where 90% of babies are where they're supposed to be. So falling into the smaller and smaller majority of babies that would flip. And so we have renewed our efforts with spinning babies. Our doula showed us those exercises, but I also went ahead and bought their like little PDF so that the husband can read and do them. And it has a little six day challenge. We're in the middle of the six day challenge. I don't think he has flipped. I will say that my whole bump ligament situation feels way better so like even if i can't endorse it like as as making him flip we're in the middle of it so i will hold judgment until the end to see if he flips even if he doesn't i have to say it's gotten rid of all of my ligament pain like it, my bump just feels so much better and less like tight and painful and sore so um i have to say it definitely has helped me feel better i hopefully he flips please so if he hasn't flipped by 36 weeks, then we start talking about an EVC, ECV, ECV. There we go. Dyslexia got me there. Um, which is essentially when they push on your stomach in a special way to try to make the baby flip. Uh, there's different factors that go into making it more successful. Um, obviously like how far up or down in your pelvis they are, uh, whether or not this is your first pregnancy, how much amniotic fluid you have. Uh, those all go into a factor, but a little over 58% of the time it works. Um, I've not heard great things about this. I've heard it's rather painful. Um, sometimes they give you like muscle relaxants and a painkiller to, to help with that. But that's something you talk about at 36 weeks. Um, because if you wait too long, then there's not enough room to do it. But you also want to give them a fair chance to flip. So that's where that's at. I do not want to do that, please. <laughs> And uh, we'll see. At that point, obviously, we'll have our scan, uh, growth scan. And if that is concerning, then we'll talk about an early delivery. If you do have an interuterine growth restrictions, the study suggests delivering between week 27 and 28 uh, for the best results. Because like I said, it is a leading cause of stillbirth. You don't want to go to term if you're uh, struggling with an interuterine growth restriction. 
On to my update. I feel like we crossed the line a little bit there into my update, but we'll get to my stuff. One, I am pumped that we are less than 50 days out. We passed the 50 day mark. Um, I have so much to do, okay? I'm not gonna lie, right after this, I'm gonna go finish Evie's room and finish filming that room remodel because uh, that needs to get done. That needs to get done and I it, we got it like 85% done and then I just like lost my way there. So that's what's happening after this. I also need to pack my hospital bag this weekend, especially like if we're looking at an, an early May delivery instead of a late May, like I need to like really get on that. Uh, like I said, I'm in the middle of that spinning babies challenge. We'll see how that goes. It is making me feel better. And I'm feeling a much wider variety of movements. I guess I didn't specify that. Like he used to only kick in like one quadrant really, and then maybe up here. And now I'm feeling him across the entirety of kind of like my pubic line um, kicking. So that's been fun. Again, it gives me more evidence that that's doing something. Something's working out there. Uh, so that's good. All right, here's what we look like from the side. Definitely, definitely pregnant. And then from the front, from the front. Definitely, now you can really see it. Definitely see those ligaments sticking out. We're running out of room. Belly button's getting flat. And then from the side. Doing okay. I think the biggest thing I noticed this week was like this smoothed out from like my bump up to like my bra line. Like this has popped out a little where it used to be flat and just kind of looked like they'd stuck a bump on. Now there's actually this gradient going down. All in all, I'm doing good. Still no stretch marks. This is like my weekly check-in to look for stretch marks, but no stretch marks. Looking good. Okay, looking for comments and feedback on this one. I still either don't have or don't feel Braxton Hicks contractions. Um, is that normal? I don't know. I haven't researched this. You can tell where all my research energy went this week. Um, but I like literally, if no one had mentioned the concept of Braxton Hicks to me, I would have no like reason to believe they existed. Um, so I'm not sure if I'm just like not feeling them or if it can just not happen. I'm pretty sure everyone has them, right? Anyway, let me know. Let me know I'm not a freakazoid. Thank you in advance, ladies. <laughs> oh, and finally, uh, normally I do this at the beginning of my update, but uh, this week I am weighing in at just shy of 162 pounds. So really doing well with weight gain. That puts me at 13 and a half pounds gained for the entirety of this pregnancy. I attribute that to two things. One, I more or less kind of reverted back to intermittent fasting. Not quite as strict by any means, but I eat breakfast, snack, a big lunch, and then I kind of have like a snack for dinner time-ish. And then I, I don't eat like a whole nother meal until breakfast. And oh my gosh, has it helped with my reflux? It's helped with the nausea. I think now that it's not hormones causing like nausea, it's like literally capacity, that's working out better. And I'm also being highly regimented with my supplements um, and medication. So four times a day now at both those meals and that snack time and then right before bed, I am doing supplements uh, that include my prenatals, which are three times a day, vitamin D, uh, iron, which is once a day, uh, fish oils, which I do. I, it's four pills, so I split them up. And then um, Pepsid before that big meal magnesium before bed and i usually take some sort of sleep aid either unisom or a tylenol pm to help with like aches and pains and stuff for sleep um because i was getting starting to get up like four five times a night which is not feasible and this way i'm only getting up one or two times so that has helped a lot i think with being able to get in more food and and keep it down and, and feel good and have a more consistent kind of gi situation so that's what is up with me this week, nothing too crazy. And finally, the family update. So we, it was Easter weekend this last weekend. Uh, Evangeline had her first Easter egg hunt. In fact, she had two, because of course both sets of grandparents needed to do that. But she really caught on. She knows what's up. Like, she knows how to hunt the eggs. I thought she'd like get disinterested since she's only one, but she did pretty darn good. I mean, she would get like 30 or 40 before she got disinterested. So that was so cute, so cute. 
Uh, and it was just really exciting to see her actually like participate in um, holidays. It made me really excited for Halloween too, <laughs> because by the time we get around to Halloween, she'll like really know what's up. So that was really adorable. Um, the husband, the good and the bad. Uh, the bad is he's still working overtime, um, usually a few nights a week and at least one day on the weekend. Um, and we've kind of had to raise the, the white flag with his managers being like, you can't do this. <laughs> like, I need, I need the rest. He needs the rest. Like, we gotta stop this. And especially as we get into May, it's like, uh, you can't like have him be the linchpin to your projects when he could get pulled at any moment. So hopefully there's only one more week of that. I feel like I've said that before. <laughs> um, but the good news is he did get his COVID vaccine. So yay, that's, uh, that's done now. It was, he got the Johnson Johnson, so we just needed one. So now he is vaccinated, which is awesome. We don't have to worry about that. One more thing off the list. All right, that was my 32 week update. I hope you understand where I'm coming from with some of my anxieties. I know it's not a big deal yet, but it just, like I said, anything sub everything's normal is really anxiety provoking um, for me. And I think anyone in this community. So appreciate your support. Appreciate you spending the time to watch me. And until next time, ladies, keep on fighting. Mwah.